Welcome back to Physics 3740 at the University of Utah. Today we're going to begin a discussion uh, about three-dimensional um, systems and problems uh, in quantum mechanics. And so we'll start off by talking about the Schrodinger equation in three dimensions. So if you recall, uh, in, in one dimension the Schrodinger equation is given uh, by this in the, is given in this form. This is the um, the full Schrodinger equation, not the time independent part, just the full Schrodinger equation. We have i h bar d psi d t is equal to minus h bar squared d d squared psi d x squared plus u of x times psi. So remember, this right hand side is the Hamiltonian operator acting on psi. The left hand side is it gives the time independent uh, time dependence. And um, uh, if you recall, um, this this term here, uh, minus h bar squared d squared d, dx squared, uh, this is in the Hamiltonian operator. That's the part that gives the kinetic energy, okay? And it's uh, or you know corresponds to the classical kinetic energy, uh, k equals p squared over two m in one dimension, and in three dimensions. Uh, we can generalize that and we say that the uh, kinetic energy is then given by uh, uh, p squared over 2m where p squared is now px squared plus py squared plus pz squared okay so it's the sum of the squares of the two of the th of the components in the three spatial directions okay and with and with that generalization then the Schrodinger equation becomes i h bar d psi d t. This left side does not change compared to what we had up here. Okay, and now we substitute in um, the uh, expressions that we have, uh, the uh, basically the operator expressions for p x, p y, and p z. So recall, that, and so this will give you minus h bar squared over two m d squared by dx squared plus d squared by dy squared plus d squared by dz squared on psi and now psi is a function of x, y, z, and t plus a potential energy term where again we're assuming a time independent potential so we have u as a function of just x, y, and z again operating on the uh, on the uh, wave function psi. Okay so uh, with uh, recall that um, uh, del squared here, uh, that this this term uh, del squared. I mean this term in in in, uh, in parentheses, d squared by dx squared plus d squared by dy squared plus d by d squared by dz squared. This is uh, can be replaced with the notation del squared, uh, which is del dot del. The del operator, if you recall is just uh, x hat times d by dx plus y hat times d by dy plus z hat by d times d by dz. Okay, so now we have, uh, so with that we can write uh, the three-dimensional um, Hamiltonian, I mean a three-dimension Schrodinger, three-dimensional Schrodinger equation uh, in a more compact form. So we have i h bar d psi dt is equal to minus h bar squared over 2m del squared psi plus u of psi. That's u times psi. Okay, um, in in one uh, also the thing to note here. So this is this is the in the end this is uh, what we're looking for. Okay, so this is the oops. This is the 3D Schrodinger equation. Okay, and um, uh, in analogy with the one-dimensional case where uh, psi star psi uh, gives you the uh, probability density, that is the probability per unit length of finding a particle that's described by psi at a particular position x. In three dimensions we have that uh, the um, uh, psi star psi gives you the uh, probability of finding uh, the particle in a particular volume that's centered on x, y, z. And this can also be in uh, as a function of time at the moment we haven't, uh, this is completely general, so we haven't, we haven't, uh, we're not considering a particular case. 